welcome to the Hindu current affairs for beginners. Let's start our today's session. First, let us see answer to the yesterday's question. With regard to bumper head parrot fish, which is an important component of coral reef ecosystem, consider the following statements. Bumper head parrot fish is the world's largest parrot fish. Yes, this statement is correct and it is characterized as vulnerable according to IUCN's red list status this bumper head parrot fish is considered as vulnerable so the second statement is also correct as both the statements are correct the answer here is c both one and two almost everybody has answered this answer correctly the answer here is both one and two and dear students as i have announced in our yesterday's video regarding the trending topics we have got a good response from you some of you were asking for a separate video and some of you were asking for to do it in the core video itself our team is ready to do for the topics whichever you want please let us know the topics in the comment box for which you want a video if it's a lengthy topic we'll try to do a separate video and if it's a small topic we'll cover in our core video itself now let's start a today's session these are all the topics that we are going to cover in our today's video our first article is why not increase vv pat count asks the supreme court this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity and the subtopic here is elections the context of this article is the supreme court is asking the election commission to why not count all the voter verified paper audit trial slips because till now only a randomly selected booth in every constituency only one randomly selected booth in every constituency will be chosen to count these vv pat slips but recently 21 political parties have filed a petition to the supreme court seeking to count 50 percent of these vv pat slips so responding to it the supreme court is now asking the election commission to increase the count of this voter verified paper audit trial slips till now the process is when it comes to when it comes to the legislative assembly elections then one randomly selected polling station in every constituency will be taken to count these vv pat slips in case of Lok Sabha election, one randomly selected polling station in every assembly segment will be taken to consider these VV pad slips, but not even 50% of the slips were being counted. So now, from the prelims point of view, what is important for us is these two points. Till now, whether all the VV pad slips will be counted along with the votes no not all of them only the slips from one randomly selected polling station in an assembly constituency and from each assembly segment in case of Lok Sabha election will be counted and what else is important from the prelims point of view is we should know everything about this VVPAT system what is this voter verified paper audit trial it is a method to provide feedback to the voters. How it will provide this feedback? This VVPAT machine is an independent verification printer machine that is attached to the EVM. So this will allow the voter to verify if their vote has gone to the intended candidate. Now, now let us see how this machine will work see when a voter presses a button in the evm then to this evm this vv pad is attached this is a printer machine then once the voter presses this evm a paper slip will be printed through this vv pad and that slip will contain two things one is the poll symbol and also name of the
candidate even this is a possible question what all will be there in this vv pat slip it contains the poll symbol and also name of the candidate so that this will allow the voter to verify whether they have voted to their choice and this slip will be visible from the glass case in this machine for 7 seconds after that this will get cut and it will be dropped into the drop box in this vv pat machine and these machines can be accessed only by the polling officers so what are the benefits about this vv pat this will enable the voter to verify whether he or she has casted their vote to the person of their choice and it will allow the authorities it will help the authorities to count the votes manually if there is any dispute in the polled votes that were polled through evm and it will operate under a direct recording election system which can detect the fraud and malfunctions and one more thing is it will ensure greater transparency in the voting process it will give assurance to both the voters as well as political parties this is all we need to know from the prelims point of view The next article is PSLV C45 project will mark several firsts for ISRO. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of science and technology. Here the title itself says that it will mark several firsts for ISRO. That means there are going to be many unique features in this mission. And this PSLV C45 is also known as emisat mission it is also known as emisat mission now let us see what are all those unique features of this pslv c45 project this pslv c45 which is going to be launched in april will be the 47th flight of this polar satellite launch vehicle which is meant for electromagnetic spectrum measurements according to isro and it will be released into an orbit at 749 kilometers this emisat is based on the famous israeli spy satellite which is known as saral the saral is israel's spy satellite now let us see what are the unique features of this pslv c45 it is the first attempt of isro to place the payloads in three different orbits now it is going to place the payloads in three different orbits the main payload that is the 436 kg emisat will be injected into this 749 km orbit after that the fourth stage of the rocket will be sent to a 504 km orbit for releasing 28 international satellites and once that is done the fourth stage will be restarted and it will be guided into an altitude of 485 km orbit and this particular stage for the next 6 months it will serve as an orbital platform for space based experiments and that too this orbital platform will have solar panels this is also the first attempt of isro and the other two experimental payloads are this automatic identification system this is an isro payload which is meant for maritime satellite applications and another payload is automatic packet repeating system this is meant to assist the amateur radio operations 
these are all some of the unique features of this PSLV C45. Pra from the prelims point of view, what is important for us is we should know the particulars of these payloads and what are the unique features of this PSLV C45 project. The next article is Minimum Area Maximum Plants. This article comes under GS Paper 3 under the topic of environment. This article is all about a man-made forest. That means it's an artificial forest in Kotayam of Kerala. This has entered into Limka Book of Records. And this man-made forest is called as Mango Meadows. The reason why it got a place in this Limka Book of Records is because it is a home to 4,800 plant varieties. Because of its biodiversity, it has attained a place in Limka Book of Records. And this forest area is only 30 acres. But here, this 30 acres itself is a home to 4,800 plant varieties and lots of agricultural and horticultural species. So from the prelims point of view, just note down which is a recent man-made forest that got place in Limka Book of Records due to its diversity. It is the Mango Meadows of Kotayam. The next article is Supreme Court seeks centers reply to plea on jail terms. This article comes under GS Paper 2 under the topic of Judiciary. From this article, now we are going to see about a section 31 of CRPC, which is the crux of this article. This section 31 of CRPC, Criminal Procedure Code, says that in case of conviction, for example, let us take a person and he was convicted for many offenses. And he was convicted for many offenses in one trial only. Then the court can sentence him to several punishments. He has committed many offenses. So the court in that one trial, it can sentence this person to many punishments. Where one jail term will start after the expiry of the other unless the court directs that punishments will run concurrently that means all these punishments that were sentenced by the court for a person who has committed many offenses will run in a consecutive manner but not in a concurrent manner so for one offense he will serve for the jail term and once it is done then he have to serve the jail term for another offense. So a petition was filed by an advocate saying that this process of this section 31 of CRPC should not be applicable for the offenses under special laws that are related to corruption and terrorism. For corruption and terrorism, this section 31 should not become applicable. And it is saying that the punishment under this is not sufficient for these kind of crimes. A strict punishment has to be imposed for these crimes related to corruption and terrorism. And one more thing what is important from the prelims point of view from this article is we should know about all these laws that were mentioned here. Unlawful Activities Act, we have discussed it. Prevention of Corruption Act, Prohibition of Binami Property Transactions Act, Prevention of Money Laundering Act and Foreign Contributions Act and the Black Money and Imposition of Tax Act and Fugitive Economic Offenders Act. Dear students, in one or the other core video, we have discussed all these acts. But if you want, we will try to make all these acts in a separate video. The next article is Chinook will improve reaction capabilities, says Indian Air Force Chief. This article comes under GS Paper 3 under the topic of defense. So now let us see what is this Chinook. This Chinook is a multi-role helicopter that is which is used for transporting troops 
artillery, equipment and fuel. This will be deployed for humanitarian as well as disaster relief operations and also in evacuating the refugees. So this multi-mission helicopter will provide the Indian Armed Forces a strategic capability not only in terms of war that is during combat but also during this humanitarian missions. The next article is delaying bad news. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of economy. This article is all about the Reserve Bank of India has issued a notice to delay the implementation of new accounting rules. They are known as Indian accounting standards for banks. It is going to delay the implementation of these new accounting rules known as Indian accounting standards for the banks for some more period. This is the second time that RBI had postponed the implementation. The reason that was cited by RBI is that the legislative amendments that needs to be done to the banking laws, the legislative amendments that needs to be done that were recommended by the Reserve Bank of India to the government of India is still under the consideration of government. So it has decided to delay the implementation of this Indian accounting standards. So from the prelims point of view, what is important for us here? It is what are these new accounting rules, Indian accounting standards. These Indian accounting standards are a set of accounting rules or norms that were developed by Indian authorities and they are in line with the international financial reporting standards. They are in line with the international accounting standards. So what does these standards mean? They will govern the accounting as well as recording of financial transactions along with the presentation of statements like profit and loss accounts and also the balance sheet of the lender or a company and as these standards were in line with the global accounting practice here the lender it is mandatory on part of the lender to adopt to these standards because they will govern the accounting and recording of financial transactions of that lender and it will also look into the profit and loss accounts and also the balance sheet of the lender. So the important thing here that we need to know is here the banks the lender has to submit the details of not the accounts that have already turned into a non-performing asset. It is not about the loans which were, which were already defaulted but they should provide according to these new rules they should provide the details of the accounts based on expected loss. If they have provided a loan they should expect the loss out of it and they should give details of this expected credit loss and are these standards are an obligation on all the entities no here the urban cooperative banks the ucbs urban cooperative banks as well as regional rural banks were exempted from this practice they are not required to apply these standards and they can continue with their already existing accounting standards. What are those existing standards? Right now, the banks and the non-banking financial companies were following the accounting principle standards. It is known as generally accepted accounting principles standards. But now, the RBI wanted them to shift to this new Indian accounting standards rules and as I said in the starting that 
there is going to be a delay in the implementation of this Indian accounting standards so that it will give the banks more time to prepare for the expected credit loss model. This is a expected credit loss model. The next article is paradigm shift for TB control. This article comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of issues related to health. This entire article is about ending TB by 2025. It is saying that it is very difficult to end TB by 2025 which is a target by India to completely eliminate the tuberculosis by 2025. So this article is saying that it is impossible for India to achieve this target. From the prelims point of view, what is important for us? We should know about this disease known as tuberculosis and what are the government initiatives taken to eliminate this by 2025 and what is its intensity in India. Now let us see all this. First of all, what is this tuberculosis? This tuberculosis or TB is an infectious bacterial disease that is caused by mycobacterium TB which will affect the lungs and this is transmitted from person to person through the droplets from throat and lungs of people with active respiratory disease and India has the highest burden of this tuberculosis. The intensity is there are two deaths occurring in every three minutes because of this tuberculosis and there are two TB related conditions. One is latent TB and the other one is active TB. In this latent TB, the bacteria will in the body will remain in inactive state and there will be no symptoms and this is not contagious but they can become active. Whereas in case of active TB, the bacteria will result in symptoms and this can even be transmitted to others. And in news, we keep hearing about some terms regarding this TB. One is multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. What is this? It is the TB which will not respond to, to the powerful anti-TB drugs. It will not respond to the anti-TB drugs. This will occur when bacteria will develop resistance against to the antibiotic. And the major reasons for the prevalence of this multi-drug resistant tuberculosis is mismanagement of this TB treatment and person-to-person -person transmission. I said that a mismanagement of TB treatment, what it means? It means incomplete and incorrect treatment. And another term we keep hearing about TB is extensively drug resistant TB. What is this extensively drug resistant TB? From the name itself we can say that. It is a more serious form of this multi-drug resistant TB which is caused by the bacteria that will not respond to the most effective, the second line of this anti-TB drugs and it will leave the patient without any treatment options and this will be considered as a final stage. Then what about our India's scenario according to the World Health Organization's 2018 Global TB Report, India accounts for nearly 27% of the total new TB infections which is the highest in the world and there is 24% of world's drug resistance TB burden which is also the highest in the world. And also there is 1.7% reduction in the TB cases and 3% reduction in deaths from 2016. Now let us see what are the TB control programs that were adopted by the Indian governments. In 1961 our Indian governments has started a district tuberculosis program 
This program integrated TB control schemes with the existing government health schemes. And later in 1962, a national TB control program was launched and this is based on this district TB center model only. Next, in 1997, a revised national TB control program was launched and this has adopted the internationally recommended DOTS strategy. In 1992, the World Health Organization has devised DOTS strategy. What is this DOTS strategy? It means directly observed treatment short course and the World Health Organization has advised all the countries to adopt this strategy to combat this tuberculosis. And this DOT strategy is based on five pillars. Now let us see what are those five pillars. Those five pillars are, the first one is political commitment and continuous funding for the TB control programs and diagnosis by examinations and the other thing is uninterrupted it is uninterrupted supply of high quality anti-tb drugs and drug intake under direct observation and accurate reporting and recording of all the registered cases of tuberculosis the indian government is implementing the programmatic management of drug resistance TB services for the management of these multi drug resistant tuberculosis and TB HIV a collaborative activities for both TB as well as HIV whereas in 2012 an online reporting system known as Nikshai was launched this is an online reporting system for medical practitioners and the clinical establishment setup in order to increase the reporting of these TB cases. And this is mainly from the private sector. Whereas in 2014, the standards for TB care in India was launched. This is an initiative to introduce uniform standards for TB care in all the sectors whereas in 2016 anti-TB drug known as Bidaquilin this was introduced under the conditional access program in order to increase the outcomes of these drug resistant TB treatment whereas in 2017 the national strategic plan for TB elimination which is from 2017 to 2025 was launched and the government has set up a target to eliminate this TB by 2025 which is five years before the international target is 2030 to eliminate the TB whereas our Indian government has adopted a target of 2025 to phase out TB. Under this national strategic plan for TB it will provide incentives to the private service providers for following the standard protocols like for providing diagnosis and treatment and the patients will be referred to the government and they will receive a cash transfer to compensate them for the direct as well as indirect costs they were undergoing due to the treatment and it is also an incentive to complete their treatment. In 2018, the government has launched a campaign and that campaign is known as End TB Summit in order to take up the activities under this national strategic plan to eliminate the TB in a mission mode by 2025. And also in 2018, the government has launched joint effort for elimination of tuberculosis in order to increase the reporting of these TB cases by the private sector. This is all you need to know about this tuberculosis. The next article is encouraging secret donations. This article comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of polity. From this article now we are going to see about a concept known as this 
electoral bonds scheme what is an electoral bond first this electoral bond is similar to that of a promissory note and this will be payable to the person whose name was there on the promissory note the bearer he is known as the bearer on demand and it is free of interest this electoral bond can be purchased by a citizen of india or anybody who were incorporated in india so now let me put it in a simple manner according to this scheme any political party that is registered under the representation of people's act of 1951 and that political party if it didn't secure it should secure not less than 1% of votes in the previous election only that political party is entitled to receive these electoral bonds these are the two conditions a political party that is registered under the representation of people's act of 1951 and a party that had secured not less than 1% of the votes polled in the previous election only they are eligible for receiving these electoral bonds then who can purchase these electoral bonds these can be purchased only by the citizens of the india or any entity that is incorporated in india so if a citizen wants to fund a political party then they can buy an electoral bond from a bank and this bond will be issued in multiples of 1000 Ten thousand, one lakh, up to one crore rupees, and these bonds will be available only in the public sector banks. Then, how these political parties will end cash will convert these bonds into cash? They have to take a bank account. This political party will be provided with a bank account in an authorized bank. so to encash these bonds the political party should use only this bank account and these electoral bonds validity is only for 15 days from the date of their issue and if this electoral bond is deposited after the expiry date then no payment will be made to the political party all this is because there is a limit on cash donations of up to 2000 rupees so if a political party has to receive a donation beyond 2000 rupees then it should receive only through this electoral bond process and these electoral bonds will be sold by the state bank of india through its authorized branches so what are the benefits of this electoral bond there will be transparent political funding and it will protect the donors from harassment here i forgot to say that here the identity of the donor will not be disclosed that means only the bank whoever is issuing this electoral bond will know the identity of the donor so the identity of the donor will not be disclosed there will be no disclosure of this how much amount is being donated will not be disclosed to the third parties and this will achieve the vision of digital india and will bring donations under the purview of tax the next article is balancing work this article comes under gs paper 1 under the topic of indian society and the sub topic is role of women and it will also come under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy so this article is all about a survey conducted by the international labor organization and the report is named as quantum leap for gender equality for a better future of work for all this report is saying that it is the 
gender bias which is the reason for gender inequality because this gender bias especially in unpaid work for women because women does these household works but here they are unpaid so this is resulting in gender inequality though most of the women were interested to be into this paid employment outside their home but due to the reasons like marriage motherhood all these reasons they were stepping out of this workforce and sticking to home where they have to do this unpaid work which is resulting in this gender inequality this article can be used while writing essay we can use the statistics that were provided by this report of international labor organization when there is any article related to women please note down the statistics that were mentioned in this article the next article is liquor cash freebies swing votes adr survey this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity and the subtopic is various features of the representation of people's act from the prelims point of view what we should know what is this adr it is association for democratic reforms it is a non governmental organization it is an ngo that works in the area of electoral and political reforms so this adr is an ngo that works in the area of electoral as well as political reforms and they wanted to bring transparency and accountability in indian politics and reduce the influence of money and muscle power in election and this ngo has become a single point single data point for providing information and analysis of the background details of the politicians background details like criminal financial and other details of the politicians and also in providing financial information of the political parties so now if we get going to this article this adr has done a survey and this is the third all india survey that was done by this ngo according to this report 86% of the people whom they have interviewed they felt that candidates with criminal background should not be in the parliament or state assembly and 89% of them were willing to vote for a candidate with the criminal records if the candidate had done good work in the past so here we can see that 86% of them were saying that we don't want a person to see in parliament or state assembly if he is from criminal background but still 89% of them were saying that even if the candidate has a criminal record but if he has done some good in the past we will vote for him and it has also considered what are the priorities of voters according to this survey better employment opportunities health care drinking water were the top 3 priorities by the voters and also roads and public transport were also considered as priorities and as it is a nationwide survey which involved more than 2.7 lakh people it has revealed that nearly 41.34% of the respondents according to them this distribution of liquor cash and freebies were important factor behind this voting for a particular candidate in an election the next article is golan heights belong to israel by united states this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of international relations from this article what is important from the prelims point of view is we should know the location of this golan heights this golan heights was part of syria until 1967 but israel had captured most of this area in a 6 day war and occupied it and annexed it completely in 1981 so here you can see the location of golan heights it actually belongs to syria but it was occupied by israel in a 6 day war in our march 22nd video that is on friday 
we have discussed in detail about this Golan Heights issue between Israel and Syria. Please refer to that video. The next article is Norm Soon for Regulatory Sandbox for Fintech Sector. This article comes under GS Paper 3 under the topic of Economy. So, according to this article, the RBI in next two months is going to release the guidelines for creating a regulatory sandbox for the fintech sector. First of all, we should know what is this word sandbox means. It is not the small box that is filled with sand where children play and experiment in a controlled environment. But this term has got new meanings also. When it comes to a computer science world, a sandbox is a closed testing environment that is designed for experimenting safely with web or software projects. And this concept, when it comes to a digital economy, it refers to a regulatory sandboxes. The regulatory sandboxes are the testing grounds for new business models. These are the testing grounds for new business products, especially these new business products which are not protected by any regulations that were there till now. So, these are the testing grounds to test the business models which do not fall under any supervision or regulation by the regulatory institutions. And these testing grounds are relevant especially in this fintech world where there is a growing need to develop a regulatory framework there is need of a regulatory framework especially in this fintech sector for these emerging business models and the purpose of this sandbox is to be in line with the strict financial regulations what all the testings that were done by the new business models they should be in line with the strict financial reg regulations in order to promote growth as well as to be in line with the most innovative companies without affecting the consumer protection. So as I said that these are the testing grounds for new or like new business models that means for innovative products and services. So these innovations will be permitted according to this concept. They will be permitted to operate for a limited period of time in order to understand the products efficiency and implications so that the best alternatives for these regulations can be evolved based on these implica implications. So, if we see what are the benefits of this sandbox, it will achieve two objectives. One is, it helps in bringing out the financial innovation. It helps to nurture the financial innovation and also it protects the consumer rights interests. And it will provide a gateway through these regulations to unlock innovation for public adoption and this will be a great boost for startups because they come up with innovative ideas and finally this is not the first thing that is there in India the globally regulatory sandboxes were already have been introduced in UK Singapore Australia and in some other countries now let's see our today's practice questions. The first question is which of the following statements is or are incorrect? I have asked incorrect about the Prevention of Corruption Amendment Act of 2018. So I will explain this Prevention of Corruption Act Amendment rules in tomorrow's video. Try to answer this question. 
And the next question is consider the following statements about the Fugitive Economic Offenders Act of 2018. Try to answer these two questions and post your answers in the comment box. In our tomorrow's video, we will see a detailed explanation for these two questions so that we will cover two of the acts that I have already mentioned in the previous article. So this is all for today. Thank you.